Hey everyone, this is Kelly and I am a solution consultant with Echolocity. And today I'm gonna to take you through um, Smartsheet's workflow automations, um, specifically through the lens of projects um, and what are our most recommended or most used automations that we use um, with project management. So you can see up here in the top left-hand corner, there's an option for automation and it gives you a few different options. So if you have never built an automation before, I would recommend um, checking out the templates that they have. So if you click create from template, it gives you some options for specific criteria that might meet your needs. Um, for example, alerting someone when the criteria is met, um, reminding someone of something on a specific date. Um, it has the option to like move data between rows, things like that. So definitely check that out if you have not created an automation before. Um, the other options here are create from scratch or manage workflow automation. So manage workflow automations is gonna give you a list of the automations that you have. Um, so you can see um, what, what's already built on the sheet. If it is grayed out like this, um, it is inactive. Um, which means it's not currently running. And sometimes we'll do that before we actually start using them. We might build an automation as an example for somebody before we're ready to turn it on or before we communicate to stakeholders that they're gonna start receiving emails. Um, so that's a really great option that Smartsheet has within these workflow automations. So um, in this view, you can also create from scratch or access those templates. So I'm gonna create from scratch and um, just walk you through the different components that are available within workflow automation. So the first thing is a trigger. And that's obviously the thing that kicks off the workflow. So the options for triggers are um, when a date is reached, when rows are added or changed, or when rows are just changed or just added. So when rows are added or changed, it's usually based on a specific piece of data changing, right? Like so you can say a specific field changes to whether it's any value or a specific value. And then you can just specify if you only want it to run if it's already been in the sheet and changed or only when the first row is added, or not the first row, but anytime the a, a new row is added. Um, when a date is reached, this one is often used for actually recurring workflows, so it's gonna give you the option to just say a specific date or even select a date field, but you can also do custom and you can repeat a workflow. So let's say every Monday at 9 a.m. you want to request an update from users who have a task that are assigned to them this week. Um, so that, that would be what the trigger is. So every week on Monday, starting on this date at 9 a.m. And then the next piece of automations are conditions. So you can make a condition. So in this case, we want it to specifically be tasks that are due. So the finish date is in the next five days. Um, and we also only want it to um, send out notifications if the status is not complete or canceled or on hold. So that's the second part of an automation. First is trigger, then our conditions, then our actions. So there's a long list of actions that Smartsheet makes available. Um, it groups them by notifications. Um, document actions, update and approval requests, so that's um, requesting an update, that's what we're going to use, and then sheet changes. So assigning people, changing data, recording dates, locking rows, um, and then sheet to sheet workflows. So for this one, I'm going to request an update. Now, if you're not familiar, an update request allows a user to update data in your sheet using a form. Now, it's not the same form that's connected to your sheet, which adds new rows. This form, an update request form, allows a user to update rows that already exist. That's the big difference between those two forms. The thing really great about update requests as well is you can send them to um, people who don't have access to the sheet. So there are automation settings that I can circle back to to make sure you have them set correctly. But um, you, know, you can use it for people who are shared to the sheet as well but you can use it specifically, um, but that's a cool use case, right, for users that don't have access to the sheet, but you need them to update a specific piece of data. Um, usually in this type of update, right, we're gonna send it to contact in a cell, so I would do it to the assigned to. You can customize a message in here, you can use brackets to reference specific data from the row, 
So the task name or the due date, right? So you'd say um, request update tasks due this week. Um, please update your tasks due for this week. And then you can even only send specific fields, right? So I could just send task name, status, start and finish. I want them to be able to leave comments, percentage complete, right? You can keep it pretty basic. <clears throat> so that's the basic foundation of an automation. Those are the three components that you need. You can skip conditions technically. You need, you need at least a trigger and an action, um, but oftentimes you have conditions based on the criteria that you're building. I'm gonna cancel out of here. Just to circle back to what I mentioned a minute ago, there are automation preferences. Um, it defaults to restricted, which means it's actually only gonna notify users for any of those notification automations that are shared to the sheet. So if you wanna expand that to users that are not shared to the sheet, there's also limited and unrestricted. Obviously unrestricted is the most open. Limited, the account also has to be in the same user as, um, sorry, in the same account as the sheet owner. It has to be like within your organization essentially. Or if you're working with you know, third-party vendors or something like that, you can select unrestricted. But it just depends on the security um, needs of your organization and um, what your needs are for the specific data in the sheet, the security needs for that. Um, let me take you through some of our most commonly used automations within um, project management. So the things that we're um, looking to do in our automations is, right, create efficiencies, allow us to notify users without us having to do it as the project manager. You know, how do I cut down the time I'm taking to communicate with stakeholders, obviously primary point of my job, but there's so much communication that needs to go out and how can I use this tool to save time? Um, so you can see here, I have a couple of alert or, um, notifications, alert and update request. So this automation is specifically when a new um, row is added. You know, how is that user gonna know that I've added a new task for them if they don't um, get assigned? So um, when uh, assigned to changes, right, it could actually not be a new task. It might be a task that exists and has been reassigned. When the assigned to changes to any value and the status is not canceled or complete, we're gonna alert the person that's just been assigned to. Um, so this is a really common one. I will say as a tip, we usually leave this one deactivated when we're first building the project plan, when you're first creating your work breakdown structure, you don't want people to get notified every single time um, they're assigned a task because they would get a sizable amount of email notifications. Typically, you build your work breakdown structure, you have your project kickoff meeting with your team, you make sure everybody has a link and they get to see the first version of the project schedule and what assignments they have. Hopefully you also have something like a My Task Dashboard or at least a filter on your sheet that filters to the current user. We will link some relevant videos in the description for those um, types of functionality. Um, but then once the project gets started, right, again, we don't have to send an email every time we reassign it. Um, so I would activate this after that fact. And then anytime I reassign a task or add a new task, um, the user will get notified. This um, notification is actually what I was just building essentially. So um, this is every, this is sending every day, um, but you can again modify that to every week. Um, this is a demo. I think I actually would change this to every single week typically versus um, daily, because that might be a lot. Your stakeholders might start to ignore the email notifications. So you have to be mindful of that. Um, but every week on Mondays at 8 a.m., when finishes in the next five days, uh oh, remember we need to ask or we need to add also if the status is not one of complete, canceled, or on hold. You could actually leave on hold if you want them to just keep an eye on it, even if it is on hold, so that way they can modify it if they need to. And then you request that update from a user. So that's another way that you can make sure that your team is updating the project plan on a regular basis without you needing to you know, check in with everybody all the time. Of course, there's always gonna be a level of needing to groom your project plan, hopefully on a weekly basis. But the goal here is that we're reducing the time we're needing to reach out to stakeholders to let them know that they need to update the project plan or that a new change has been made. So some of our most commonly used, highly recommended, um, find the cadence that works um, well for you in terms of timing based on your project. Maybe it's every two weeks even, uh, which you can do. 
you can say every uh, two weeks, which is great. Um, awesome. I'm going to cancel out of that. Um, another uh, really helpful uh, tool that we use is record date, uh, the record date action in the workflow automation. So pretty simple automation, but really powerful. So um, for example, we use it for when the status changes to complete. So when the status changes to complete, record the date. So here's an example where we don't have any conditions. There's no conditions to this automation. It's just when the status changes to complete. This becomes very useful because you can then create reports based on these dates. For example, you can show how many tasks have been completed in the last seven days, in the last 14 days, in the last 30 days. And you can use that based on this completed date that's been recorded when the status changes. So that's a really helpful tool. Um, we also have it for assigned to, so we can see how long a task has been assigned to somebody and whether it's been updated. And then we also record the date when it's been canceled. That's more informational purposes, you know, to understand when in the project life cycle does that task get canceled. Um, you can record a date based on any, really any criteria. Um, and this is a really common one we use, um, not just in the project plan, but also in our RAID log, or if you know us, we use CRAID logs. Um, so you can see when, when tasks are closed. Another great efficiency gain um, automation that we use is automatically changing um, cell data. And where we use this is between the percentage complete and status. So in our project plans, we typically recommend having a percentage complete and a status. Now, I've seen that there are um, sometimes templates or PMs that use formulas in the status column, so that's an option, right? You can use a formula in the status column that says, that looks at the percentage complete and says, if it's zero, make the status not started. If it's 1% to 99%, make the status in progress. If it's 100%, make the status complete. Where there are issues with that is if you need to mark a task as canceled or on hold. Now, sometimes if a task is canceled, you might just delete it. That's an okay strategy. Sometimes you might want a record of it, and you can see that it was specifically canceled, especially if you have a repeatable project where all the tasks are the same, but sometimes some get canceled and you need that record that it was canceled. Um, if you have a formula, you can't do that. The formula is going to only allow you to have those, um, you know, have it con the percentage complete. So that's why we don't do that. Um, but what this does is, right, it can kind of be annoying that when you're marking the percentage complete as 100% that you then also have to change the status to complete. Um, so what this does is when the percentage complete changes to 100%, it changes the cell value and status to complete. Um, we do have a condition here, and the reason for this is because we have this going both ways. We also have an automation that says if the status changes to complete, change the percentage complete to 100%. We have to have this condition in here because otherwise it would be a circular automation that would just keep running over and over again if them changing or always changing each other. So essentially, if this is not already complete, then change it to complete. If it is, leave it alone. Um, so that's a really powerful one too that just keeps, again, I see a lot of times um, we have conditional formatting that highlights rows as red if they're not complete. Um, past the due date, um, and usually it's based on either the status or the percentage complete, and sometimes only one of the data points will be updated, and it will show red, but it's actually not past due because the other data points updated. So this is another way to gain efficiency to keep your project schedule groomed um, and saving you time to not have to go back and fix it, and saving your users time where they only have to enter and update one piece of data. Something we'll often do actually is lock the status column and only allow the project manager to update that because PM is the only one that can decide a, a task that's gonna be on hold or canceled and just allow the users to update the percentage complete progress and then these automations will take care of the rest. Um, as you can see, we have one for, um, this is deactivated right now, but um, you, we have one for, um, the in-between, right, if it's 1% to 99%, so essentially if percentage complete changes and it's not 0% or 100% and it's not link, change it to in progress. Um, and then we usually have, it doesn't look like it's in this demo, but we usually have the 0% too and changes to 0%. So even if you update something to 0%, it will also change it to not started. So I hope this was helpful for you. 
Um, again, just wanted to share some of our most used automations in project management so that it can help you in your project, save you time, create efficiency for the team, and just be able to leverage the great features that are within Smartsheet. As I mentioned, we'll include a few relevant videos in the description. So check that out. Leave a comment if you have a question. Thank you.